I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com and part two of the dogfight between the Apple iPhone 5 and the HTC One X starts in just a moment. But first, special thanks to our friends at Best Buy Mobile for giving us devices like this that we give to you at PhoneDog.com in our Instant Win game, which you can find at InstantWin.PhoneDog.com. When you go into Best Buy Mobile, you'll walk out working. They'll help you set up your email, your web, your contacts, your camera settings, all that stuff, passbook and more so when you walk out the door, you're good to go at Best Buy Mobile. Which one deserves the crown? Is it the iPhone 5 or the One X? It's part two of the dogfight and it starts right now. So to start out in part two of this dogfight battle, let's take a look at Verizon LTE speed test. Now this is on AT&T, it's, it's actually rotating between 3G and HSPA+, but still, Let's take a look at Verizon's 3G, or, uh, 4G LTE because it is super fast and it's nice to see the iPhone finally up in that area. That said, the One X on AT&T does support 4G LTE capabilities. So if you're in a market that supports that, on AT&T you're going to get some great speeds and they can range anywhere from, I've seen it as slow as 3 megabits per second and as high as 40 megabits per second depending on what market you're in. Now Verizon's a little bit more consistent, a little bit more conservative. I see speeds between 5 and 12 megabits per second just as they quote on the download. 2 to 5 megabits per second on the upload, although since the Democratic National Convention, air, uh, speeds up town have been pretty decent. 20 megabits per second here, 17 megabits per second on the upload. So very fast all around, and again, nice to see the fact that the iPhone supports that. Uh, 1,440 milliamp hour battery here means you should get pretty decent. It's a very small battery, actually, comparatively speaking, to the 1,800 milliamp hour battery pack over here. It's non-removable on both devices, but still, you should get pretty decent battery life uh, on the iPhone. They're quoting eight hours of talk time or eight hours of general use time and a little bit longer when it comes to standby time. So, shouldn't be too bad. Early reports look pretty good when it comes to battery life. So let's take a look at the web browsers uh, as well and load up phonedog.com on both of these devices. And again, having some severe uh, data issues over here because AT&T is not great in my office and this one is not on my micro cell that I have to keep all of my AT&T devices on because service is that bad uh, in my office. So it's loading up right now and again, LTE on Verizon on the other hand, loading up over on this side. Now it's going to be a lot, for a lot of people at least, it's going to be all about ecosystem. I think for people that still work with iTunes on a regular basis and still make that their primary device or primary music driver, iTunes ecosystem is going to mean you're going to want to stay with the iPhone, or at least stay in that Apple ecosystem. They still do a great job there. It's nice to be able to download a song on my computer and have it auto sync over to my iPad, my iPhone, and more. That said, some of the third party alternatives on the Google side, Spotify, Google Music, etc., are doing a great job and perhaps for some it's not as important as it is for others and so that may override your decision making process. Phone dog loading up on both of these. Loaded up over here, pinch to zoom still incredibly responsive. Typical iPhone fluidity here, portrait to landscape nice and fast, no lag whatsoever and you get a couple of different options here. For example in landscape I can get rid of the borders around the sides where the URL bar is and down here and take advantage of that and then again transitions really nice and really fast. I can add new pages as I see fit down here. So I can hit done when I'm done there and then of course portrait to landscape transitions and pinch to zoom responsive over here as well. Little to no lag on both of these devices and of course a little bit of a different setup over here. When I get to the menu I can do add to, I can add tabs, I can view the desktop site, enable flash player and more directly from the menu and again buttons down here include back, home and then recent applications though it does do an HTC interface over here as opposed to the stock Android interface that we're used to where we swipe from side to side instead of up. This is a proprietary HTC look and feel uh, over on this device. Over here again, very responsive, little to no lag, and I can double tap twice and see my running applications as well as lock stuff into portrait mode, play music out of the gate, and then load up iTunes by default. Otherwise, I can just see the running applications here in the bottom. Now press to hold, or excuse me, I didn't mean to double tap, press to hold, Activate Siri. Siri, what's the weather like? Here's the forecast through Monday. And there's the forecast through Monday. So you can use Siri over here. Unfortunately, because this has not come at least right now with Android 4.1, you don't get the advantage of Google Now over here, so you can't use it uh, in the way that uh, you can do it with Siri over here. That said, Android 4.1 should roll out very soon over here. And again, I think the benefits that you get, applications very similar across both platforms here, and cameras are very good on both. On that note, let's take a look. 8 megapixel shooters on both of these devices. We'll load up the 8 megapixel camera over here as well. And let's do, actually, you know what? We'll do iPhone on iPhone. Let's take, no, we're not. Let's do original Galaxy Note because it's easier to take a picture of a white phone. So I'm going to focus in on some text down here with both of these devices. Now you get a couple of features down here. You get panorama mode, which is new to the iPhone 5. 
been on Android devices for some time, and I hate when I hear people say, Panorama, doesn't the iPhone have that? Well, quite a few Android devices have had that for a long time as well. So not saying it's not awesome that it's on the iPhone 5. What I am saying is I hate the fact that people think it's revolutionary because it's on the iPhone 5, when in reality, this has been on plenty of devices for plenty of time. So there is a quick picture. And of course, I can switch over to 1080p HD video recording as well pretty easily, as well as the front-facing camera. So, great camera over here. iPhone continues to do a great job in the camera department. But with the ImageSense processor and HTC One X, it's really impressive all around because you can do some really cool things here. For example, as you can see here, and I'm just taking, and I have the sound turned off. I probably should turn the sound up so you can hear this. I'm back out of that really quickly. And I can just take pictures back and forth as I see fits. If I'm watching a football game, a basketball game in real life, I can take a bunch of pictures and I can choose the best shot and delete the rest if I want to. Conversely, I can go over here into, bam, video mode, start up a video, and I can take still pictures while I'm in the video as well. So it's like if I'm doing a video of a football game or maybe my son's football game, and all of a sudden he comes up and he scores a touchdown, I can take quick pictures and you see this magnified in the AT&T HTC One X commercial as well. So nice features there. Camera-wise, it's definitely a wash. Both of these have fantastic cameras, but I think the features of the One X distinguish it as a, uh, as a premium camera option in between these two devices. So I think in a lot of cases, the iPhone 5, great features, and if you're an iPhone fan, it's great to have these features. LTE, super nice. Apple A6 CPU, super nice. A thinner and lighter body, and I mean, really, when you look at the build quality of this device, you can't beat the way it looks. It's a beautiful device. Say what you will about it scuffing up or breaking, but it's an absolutely beautiful device here with a metal back. You've got glass on the front, and you've got beautiful metal sides. It's thinner and lighter than the original iPhone 4S, or I should say the iPhone 4S, and it's packing a nano SIM card now, as opposed to a micro SIM card. Headphone port now on the bottom, along with your lightning port, which is your new charging port here, much smaller, and you can flip it around much like an AC adapter module on the MacBook Pro or MacBook Air. You can flip it either way and take advantage of charging it from either direction. So again, a very nice device. It's the same size in terms of, uh, in terms of width. It's just taller because of the four inch display. So for people that love iPhone, it's going to continue to be a great option for people that are perhaps first time smartphone buyers. It'll continue to be a great option as well. That said, the customization over here, fantastic. I think Android, with Android 4.0 and up, it's finally at a point with uh, combined with user interfaces where it can be good for the mainstream consumer. Finally, finally at that point, and again, I showed you the dial pad. Let me pull it up over here as well and show you what it looks like over on the HTC One X. Now, one area where this thing does a great job is personal information management. So not only can you synchronize stuff up with Gmail and with Google, obviously, take advantage of Google Drive, Google Voice, all this stuff natively with Android a little bit better than you can. Google Talk, for example, much better than you can with iOS. And I'll scroll back over here so you can see personal information management. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, on this device. So I'm going to load up People, for example. Let's just take a look at Bill Stevenson, who looks, oddly enough, a lot like me. So Bill Stevenson right here. Call is mobile. We can text message. I can set default actions and more. But where it gets really cool, I can go over here to this thread and see a couple of different things. My last messages to Bill, my last emails to Bill, and my last calls to Bill as well. So it's like, oh, I called Bill yesterday. I'm waiting for him to call me back. Or I sent him a text message the other day. Now, email, unfortunately, it does not synchronize up Gmail stuff over here. It is only the email application. Google's API doesn't allow for that right now. But it is nice to be able to see, oh, when did I last text message Bill? When did I last call Bill? And keep it all in one organized place. You get gallery and updates as well out of the gate. So again, you know, since for some great improvements in a lot of ways, and when it comes to personal information management, they do a really killer job here combined with some awesome customization. So it's gonna depend on what you want here. Both of these, again, are great devices, but if you're looking for one, it's a dogfight. We gotta choose a winner between one of these devices. The winner of the dogfight, by a very narrow margin, we're talking like very narrow margin here, and it's a tough one for me because I think when you analyze overall features, it ever so slightly goes to the HTC One X. And I'll tell you the reason why. The One X is a fantastically well-crafted device, unibody design here, internal battery, micro SIM card, or micro uh, charging port here, micro USB charging port, volume rocker, headphone jack. It looks great. The camera is fantastic on this device. Android phones are finally, finally up to par with things like this and the Galaxy S3 and the Galaxy Note 2 and the HTC One S. These phones are finally up to par with devices like the iPhone. And I think in a lot of cases, iPhone 5 is playing catch up 
by a thinner design, by a larger display, by LTE, whereas if you go with AT&T now, you could have had LTE on this device for months prior to the iPhone 5 coming out. So I think they're finally at a point where their mainstream consumer can pick this up and use it. My mother's used HTC Sense, my dad's used HTC Sense at some point, and both of them have been able to use it pretty successfully. So you know, you look at this and you're like, finally, combined with a great user interface, Android 4.0, Android 4.1 is finally ready for mainstream adoption. And again, you're getting devices, yeah, they may not be glass, they may not be metal, but still a beautiful build quality here. It's thin, it's sleek, it offers some great camera features and more. That's not to say that this isn't a phenomenal device, but I think some of the early features like issues with the keyboard and the overall gesture responsiveness make it a challenging you know, recommendation over something like the One X. It's still a great device, very fluid, but I'm kind of like, hey, come on, Apple. Like This is very atypical to you. This is not you. You, know, you usually have great fluidity, and I'm hoping that with the next software update, they'll fix that over on the iPhone 5. Much more coverage to come on PhoneDog.com with both of these devices. Keep it locked on the site for continuing coverage. Whatever the case may be, whatever you think of the dogfight winner, there are some awesome really awesome devices on the market. Devices like the Note 2, devices like the Lumia 900, devices like the Lumia 920, which is coming out, and the One has a ton of different great options on the marketplace this holiday season. You're gonna be happy regardless of what you choose, and these dogfights are just getting harder and harder as they get, you know, as manufacturers kind of standardize everything, as dual core processors become the norm. It gets harder and harder to decide what's most important to you, but in terms of a winner, slight edge to the One X. Be sure to like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash phone dog. Hit me up on Twitter and let me know what you think at phone dog underscore Aaron and on Facebook at facebook.com slash phone dog AB. Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned for more dog fights on phone dog.com. We'll see you next time.